After taking apart so many new phones this year, I think it's about time I did a rundown on the most and least repairable smartphones available on the market heading into 2023. While not having covered every single phone that came out this year, I've certainly covered most of the flagships from the popular brands, like Samsung, Apple and Google. Phones this year were honestly quite boring, with only minor differences from previous models. It appeared to be a refinement year for most, or maybe phone companies are just running out of ideas. That being said, there were some design changes internally that affected the repairability of some of these phones, most notably the iPhone 14. Unlike its pro counterpart, the 14 was redesigned internally, which while looking like an iPhone 13 on the outside, made it the most modular phone this year. It addressed one of the biggest physical repair barriers, the almost irreplaceable back glass, that previously had to be removed with lasers or a whole housing replacement if cracked. Now it can be easily detached. However, the iPhone 14 Pro didn't get this internal redesign, making its repairability identical to that of the 13 Pro. While Apple has made without a doubt the most modular phone of the year, it still holds out as one of the least repairable on the list. But it wasn't the worst, that was left to a certain Android phone iPhones still aren't repairable, at least from a perspective of third-party repair. As I've mentioned in each retrospective iPhone teardown video, Apple is still using its iOS software to aggressively prevent third-party repair by removing features and displaying warning messages. If it wasn't for this, the iPhone would have been one of the most repairable iPhones on the market. But with such anti-third-party repair software, only Apple's approved repair options can really harness the phone's newfound repairability. The most physically difficult device to repair this year was the Nothing Phone 1. It had a strong focus on aesthetics and flashing lights, but certainly less on repairability. It was actually the most difficult Android phone I've ever taken apart to date. The complex Glyph interface adds to the items that need to be removed in order to access the most basic parts, such as the battery. And with various plastic decals and extra flex cables, it's not just an involved process, but one that comes with added risk of damaging something. On top of the physical barriers I found, the fingerprint sensor is also not replaceable, as the software rejects the replacement part. It requires some calibration, which the Nothing Company hasn't provided. Another caveat with a niche phone like this is the lack of available parts. I still have my two teardown units, as I have still to find any replacement adhesive to reattach the back glass. The fight for the most repairable flagship this year was between Samsung's S22 and the Google Pixel 7. And it was certainly close. On one hand, the Pixel 7 opens display first, with only one connector, it's the fastest and easiest of the two for a screen replacement. But if you need to replace anything else, like the battery, you risk damaging the display getting to it. And with the Pixel 7 soldered on USB-C port, Samsung has the upper edge. That being said, the Pixel still fares well, and with an unlockable bootloader and access to fingerprint recalibration software, it's clear Google isn't trying to take away the ability to repair or modify your phone. As for the S22, its repairability is similar to that of Samsung phones for the last five or so years. Entering from the back, it's slightly more involved for a display replacement, but I'd rather risk breaking a $20 panel of glass and not a several hundred dollar display trying to replace the battery. And with a modular USB-C port, it's what I'd call the most repairable flagship of the year. Its bootloader is also unlockable, however with a built-in e-fuse, doing so will permanently disable secure folder and NFC payment. One thing every phone mentioned so far has had in common is a glued-in battery. One not meant for easy replacement. So while the S22 might be the most repairable flagship I took a look at this year, it's not the most repairable phone on the market. That goes to the Fairphone 4. If the necessity for repair is above all else, the Fairphone is the way to go. An entirely glueless design that allows for easy removal of all major components. And with a detachable back, the battery can be easily swapped to extend battery life on long trips or a place when worn out. Like the other Android phones on this list, its bootloader is also unlockable, allowing for custom ROM support. 
This phone does however come with the drawback of little water resistance, a less slick design and not the newest hardware. As for parts availability, Apple, Samsung, Google and Fairphone sell some replacement parts to the public. However, it's important to understand not all these companies sell parts at a price that would make financial sense. Samsung won't sell you a battery without the display coming with it, making the battery replacement cost hundreds of dollars. And Apple will sell you a replacement display for just a few dollars less than having them replace it, even though you have to install it yourself and still call up to get their approval to make the phone actually work properly after installation. Based on my teardowns of these devices, the least to most repairable smartphone consists of the Nothing Phone 1, followed by the iPhone 14 Pro, iPhone 14, Pixel 7, S22, and finally, the Fairphone 4, taking the crown. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, consider subscribing and check out the Teardown and Repair Assessment playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.